Telcott Cap with the Reproductive Right Project of the ACLU. And we, I'm. This has been Building Bridges, your community and labor report with Mimi Rosenberg and Ken Nash. And log on to our website at www.buildingbridgesradio.org. I'm Brian. At 58, doctors told me I had the heart of a 37-year-old man. They told me that after my heart transplant surgery. If you're a smoker, here are some tips in case that happens to you. First, you have to quit smoking before you can get on a list for a transplant. So quit now. And never feel sorry for yourself. I don't. I only feel sorry for that 37-year-old man. Developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For help quitting, call 866-QUIT-YES or visit quityes.org. This hour of programming on WDBX Carbondale is sponsored in part by your membership contributions and by Harbaugh's Cafe. Harbaugh's Cafe is located at the south end of the Strip at 901 South Illinois Avenue, featuring their breakfast menu and the bottomless cup of coffee. Harbaugh's also serves salads, sandwiches, homemade soups, and vegetarian items. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. till 2 p.m., Sunday, 8 to 2. Breakfast available anytime takeout available. Harbaugh's Cafe, 901 South Illinois Avenue in Carbondale, serving breakfast and lunch with a twist. 351-9897. Support for WDBX comes from Mike's Music of Carbondale. Mike's Music offers services on all stringed instruments from string changes to neck and body repair, upgrades and customization. Mike's also buys, sells, and trades all types of musical instruments and equipment and offers private one-on-one instruction for guitar, bass, and piano. Mike's Music at 816 East Main Street in Carbondale or on Facebook, Monday morning to you. I'm Amy Fox. I'm the public relations officer for the city of Carbondale and we hope you had a great weekend and maybe are just now waking up with us. You're listening to WDBX FM Carbondale. It is Monday, September the 10th and we have Miss Jennifer Olson from the Carbondale Chamber of Commerce in studio this morning. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Not a problem and we're trying to do a monthly segment with the Carbondale Chamber of Commerce because you have endless amounts of activities and events going on in the community. Um, Can't believe we're already talking about September. <laughs> I know, and we appreciate the opportunity to be on because it doesn't do us any good to host events and then not have people know about them so that we can get good attendance. Right, so you have a couple of things going on this week specifically. Yeah, this is a busy week. Uh, we have a couple ribbon cuttings. Um, the McDonald's out at University Place is uh, doing a ribbon cutting for their uh, remodel, and that's at 11 on Wednesday. And then we have a new business that's opening. Um, that is Sterling Sofa Company. So that's a Southern Illinois company opening another location. And that location is next to Cool Spoons, kind of in front of Kohl's. And um, last but not least, um, those both those ribbon cuttings are at 11 o'clock. One is on Wednesday and one is on Thursday. And then also on Thursday in the evening, we will be at TJ's Fine Jewelry for Business After Hours starting at 4. Really exciting to see all of these ribbon cuttings recently. Um, We have two just in the same week. Yeah, um, it's amazing because to me, it counters any negativity about lack of growth. I mean, when you're having three, in this case, this month, we have three ribbon cuttings. We had a couple last month. And it's nice to go out to those and hear people talk about their positive experience about moving into Carbondale and opening in Carbondale. And the cool thing, too, is they're not just confined to one particular area. They're kind of spread out throughout the entire community as well. 
Absolutely. The ribbon cutting that we have later in the month uh, for Don Taco, it is uh, over at Wall and Grand. And so that is right on the front door of campus and right in the heart of a lot of student living. So it's nice that the things that are happening are happening throughout the city. And why is it so important for the community to come out and support these new or even sometimes existing businesses? I think it just shows the support for the investment that the business owner is willing to make and to show them that they they did the right thing. It also uh, provides them with a little bit of sense of pride and uh, makes their employees see that they are supported in our community. And tell me a little bit more about the business after hours event. This is something that you do every single month and it rotates from location to location. Yeah, so uh, the hosts sort of dictate what the events look like, but generally speaking, they're an open house at the end of the workday. People can come and go, and there'll be food and beverage. And in this case, uh, TJ's Fine Jewelry, which is our host, has some special collections and some estate jewelry that they wanted to showcase. So uh, it worked out perfectly that they had the timing of having some unique things going on in their business and that they were willing to host an event for the chamber where people can come out and just mingle and uh, meet new people. And, you know, we understand that not everybody can get out during the workday to attend luncheons or to attend 11 a.m. ribbon cuttings. So this is a nice pass through after work to stop by and say hello and visit. And it's a casual atmosphere. Um, You know, a lot of times people are really intimidated to attend a big, large function, but this is a smaller setting, super casual. So if someone isn't maybe a big people person, this is a good opportunity for them. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes it's nice to not have a program. It just gives people the freedom and flexibility to, to stop by when they can and not feel pinned down to a seat. Um, and maybe miss the chance to talk to somebody that they wanted to introduce themselves to. And moving on, um, September 27th, you have a round pie straight talk featuring Tina Carpenter with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, These are great programs. I know I've been to several of these before, um, and you do a really good job of getting interesting speakers. So what's nice about Round Pie's Straight Talk is it's less speaking and more interaction. Um, Usually they'll do a brief introduction and then it's really a question and answer session. And the reason for the timing of having the executive director, Tina Carpenter, come in is that Boys and Girls Club is going through some rebranding. So while since their inception they've been known as Boys and Girls Club of Carbondale, they're going to change their name to Boys and Girls Club of Southern Illinois because uh, they are serving a wider population that's not necessarily Carbondale only. And also... In conjunction with their rebranding and renaming, it gives them an opportunity to go out on a speaking circuit, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of the speaking circuit is to let people know that they're, they're more than just basketball after school, which is a sort of stereotype that they have to battle, but they have so much programming and they serve so many other needs. And, um, It really is more formal than that and more assistance than basketball. So uh, we'll get Tina out and hopefully some other community partners will host Tina and her team uh, during this rebrand and relaunch. Great. And um, you do have Carbondale Young Professionals. Um, This is a group I haven't heard of too much. So they're kind of gaining momentum, I guess you would say, throughout the community. I'm super excited to have Carbondale Young Professionals as a sub or branch of uh, the Carbondale Chamber. You know, it can be intimidating if you're new to the community or you're young in your career to walk into a big event like annual banquet or regional chamber luncheon. I, I get it. I remember. And this group is hosting some reoccurring smaller events throughout the year so they can get to know each other and they can have some familiar friendly faces when they start attending some of the larger events. And so uh, they have a real casual event this Tuesday on the 11th, and that is Bags on the Patio. And so it's a cornhole 
uh, competition. I use the word competition loosely mm-hmm. because Friendly you can certainly <laughs> come out and just have fun. I know uh, not everyone has the athletic prowess in that department, but come out, buy yourself a, a snack and a beverage and just hang out on the patio, very casual, and meet people. And that's, again, kind of a come and go, five to eight And then later in the month, on the 20th, they've put together a really nice panel of, uh, I guess I I should say, more older or sometimes seasoned uh, professionals is more correct. But um, they have a panel, and the topic is climbing the corporate ladder. And so that event is happening at PAG's Pizza. And so it will be an hour of just mingling and then we'll sit down for dinner it is just buy your own meal there's no charge to attend and have the opportunity to interact with a panel and ask questions about how they got where they are and um, more importantly maybe if they're in a position to do some hiring you know ask them questions about what are they looking for why do they pick who they pick why do they select not to choose some people who apply for things Mm -hmm. And uh, membership for the young professionals group, do you have to be elected to a position? Can I just attend if I'm a young professional in the community, any profession? How does that work? So if you're employed by a member business, there's no additional charge. Um, If you are on your own or owning your own company or the business that employs you is not a member, we do ask uh, for $35 per year in annual fee. That being said... Um, we're not looking to collect that the first event that you attend. And actually, I would invite you to go ahead and attend everything throughout the end of 2018 as kind of a sampler to see if it makes sense for you. And then consider stepping up next year for 2019 and paying that $35 fee. It does help um, the programming and, and being able to buy door prizes and uh, maybe pick up you know, a round of beverages here and there or some other things. Um, so it's nice to have that fee. And honestly, I always always think it's a little bit about having skin in the game too and, um, you know, being a part of the group. Right. Um, and, but it doesn't, it's not confined to a particular profession. Um, you have people represented from all sectors of the community then. Absolutely. And we have mm-hmm. some young professionals that are uh you know, running a, a one man or one woman business, we have some of the young professionals that attend who work for our largest employers like Southern Illinois Healthcare and SIU. So the gamut of people is very widespread, and um, what they do for a living is is very varied. And you know, the goal would be that they meet somebody and makes a connection that either they enjoy spending time personally with or more importantly that they make a business connection that can forward their career and um in recent months and days it feel feels like at least from a community perspective that the chamber's been um concentrating a lot of effort on programming and trying to get the entire community involved with everything why is that so important for the chamber of commerce to be so invested into the community Well, I think we're always uh, struggling to prove our value like any other organization and to demonstrate why you should bother to be a part of things and why you should pay dues and things like that. Um, And part of proving our value is we're marketing these businesses. And one way that we're marketing is by community engagement and letting the community know who our business partners are that are active in the community and that host events and that, you know, are here and what they have to offer. And if um, people listening this morning would like to get more information, I know we try to cover a lot of stuff. um, And if you're like me, you hear part of it and then you miss the date or the time or the location. So if people have questions, would like to see a whole schedule of events for the month of September, Where can they go to get that information? Sure. Our website is CarbondaleChamber.com, and there is an events tab or a calendar is is where it's listed specifically. So they could go there and get the additional information. Also, we are located in the old train depot, and so they could stop by, and we can get them some additional information. I know what it's like. You're in the car, Mm -hmm. and you think it sounds interesting, and you don't get the date. But um, also, social media is a good place to find our events. 
Great. We covered lots of good information. Anything else I forgot to mention? Anything else you would like to add? Well, um, I know last time I visited, we were very focused on Saluki Pride, but <laughs> um, I will remind everybody who's interested in painting the town maroon that we have our fo- first home opener football this Saturday (laughs) and we're coming off of a very very good game and we're in another win before that so lots of excitement around football but if you um, have flags or shirts or you want to do a maroon day on Friday with your staff this is the week because we have our first visiting team coming in on Saturday and there will be some incentives with uh, dressing up your staff in maroon. Yes, uh, the Chamber and our Saluki Pride Committee will be keeping an eye on social media, watching for the businesses that do take pictures of their efforts and their team all in their SIU gear. And if you could use hashtag Carbondale Proud or hashtag Saluki Proud, it'll make, us easier, make it easier for us to find those posts and then we have some surprises where some of our member businesses are going to give us prizes to go out and reward area businesses for showing their pride well you can't go wrong with that (laughs) thanks so much jennifer olson with the carbondale chamber of commerce we're going to take a short break and be right back to you Good morning, this is Alicia with the City of Carbondale here to bring you this week's calendar of events. On Wednesday, September 12, 2018, it's the Study Abroad Fair 2018 at the Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale. This event will begin at 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Student Center on the first floor south entrance. Do you need a passport? Bring your birth certificate or expired passport to the fair to obtain your pass to the world. Join the adventure. For more information, you can go to Facebook at SIU Study Abroad. And on Friday, September 14, 2018, the Varsity Center presents the movie The Past. The Past is a 2013 French-Italian-Iranian film. The movie begins at 7 p.m. on Friday. Tickets are $7 for the general admission, $5 for students and are available in advance at www.thevarsitycenter.org. For more information, call 618-457-5353. And on Saturday, September 15, 2018, the Greater Glisby Temple presents a community picnic. This community picnic will be held from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Evergreen Park, located at 1205 West Pleasant Hill Road. There will be great food and great fun. For more information, call 618-203-0173. For information on these events and others, please visit our website at wdbx.org or carbondeltourism.org or you can reach us by phone at 618-457-3228. Thank you and have a great week. Good Monday morning to you. You are listening to Talk of the Town on WDBX FM Carbondale. We hope you're having a great Monday. It is a beautiful day out there, cooler temperatures. Um, So hopefully your schedule allows you to even just take a walk around the block, um, maybe enjoy lunch out on the patio. Um, Joining me in studio this morning is Gary Metro with the Lions Club. You are the president. Correct. Thank you so much for joining us. And you have something delicious that we're going to be talking about, which is Pancake Days can't go wrong <laughs> exactly right uh, and uh, the lion the carbondale lions club has been doing pancake days longer than i've been around and it, it's a tradition uh, and the club itself is a tradition we've been in carbondale for 95 years and and when you've been around for a long time i think people sometimes take you for granted i hope they don't take us for granted this weekend with pancake days which is a tremendous breakfast and an opportunity to give money to a good organization that gives all the money away to other good organizations so gary tell me a little bit about the lions club your mission core values um really what your purpose is here in the community because you do so much good well it's an easy one to remember our mission statement is very simple it's simply we serve 
And, and that pretty much defines what the club is all about. Uh, the Pancake Days are our biggest fundraiser for the year. And as I said, the fundraiser is extremely important because uh, a lot of people depend on the contributions that we make to their efforts. And how do those contributions go in and help the community? I know you have multiple projects. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we do do a lot of things. Uh, but the, the money that we raise on Pancake Day, uh, it goes to uh, support veterans' activities. Uh, we f- have some money that we send to the Newman Center, the Carterville Lions Club, the Women's Center, the Boys and Girls Club, Gumdrops, Good Samaritan Ministries. The Lions of Illinois Foundation gets a contribution annually, too. This Able Veteran, Habitat for Humanity, Specialized Equine Services, St. Francis Care, the, anim- the No-Kill Animal Shelter, Eye Care, and we also do a student recognition program throughout the year where worthy students uh, come in, we give them lunch, and we honor them. That was a very long list. I thought you were just going to keep going and going. (laughs) Well, I left a few things out, but uh, I I think you get the gist of it. Uh, This year, those contributions to those organizations top $10,000. And we would like to give away more money, and the way you could help us do that is come to Pancake Days. Uh, It's on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday hours are 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Sunday hours are 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can dine in or you can carry out. It doesn't matter to us. At the Town Square Pavilion? Yes, it's at the Town Square Pavilion. Many people know it as the old freight station pavilion right next to the railroad tracks. <laughs> and if you can find a better pancake and porky breakfast for 6 bucks for an adult, uh, you should probably have it. But we make a really good pan- pa- excuse me, pancake breakfast. Children only pay 3 bucks. A bargain, and all of the members are helping to prepare this meal as well. Yeah, it's it's something of a labor of love, and <laughs> and it really is a lot of labor. Uh, the work has been going on organizing it and getting supplies ordered and making sure that we've got everything ready to go when we start setting up on Friday. Uh, and that in and of itself is quite a task. We put up a tent uh, next to the freight station pavilion, and we also hang up uh, side panels on the pavilion in case it gets cool or rains, people can come in and they'll be warm and dry. Well, you can't beat that. And if people would like to get tickets for this, do they just come the day of, or can they purchase tickets ahead of time? How does all that work? Uh, tickets are on sale now. In fact, if someone comes tearing down to the radio station, I'll sell them tickets myself. <laughs> uh, and you can buy tickets from uh, any member of the Carbondale Lions Club. Um, and you can also buy them at the door. It doesn't matter to us what you do. Uh, we would like to sell as many as possible in advance. So if you do know a lion and you feel like having some really good pancakes and helping a really great cause, uh, buy some tickets. That would We would really appreciate it. And um, obviously, as you mentioned, and I was at your meeting on Friday, there is a lot of work that's done behind the scenes that people don't don't realize. But at, when it's all said and done, what makes it so worth it to you? Well, it, it's that we're able to serve the community. That makes it worthwhile. And the fact that, uh, you know, this isn't an area where uh, money comes easily. Uh, everybody has to do their share, and we try to do ours. We think there's other great service clubs in town, and, and we think that we're part of the fabric that, that makes Carbondale a great community. And, and you mentioned all the background work. Well, some of the stuff that we have to take care of in advance includes uh, getting things like 250 uh, cartons of milk, white milk, 300 cartons of uh, chocolate milk, Apparently, chocolate's a little more popular with kids. Uh, We get 16 gallons of orange juice ordered. We order two cases of margarine. We order 18 cases of sausages. Um, And we uh, this all ends up preparing uh, the pancake mix itself. We end up fixing 25 five-gallon buckets of pancake batter, Uh, and that's that's a lot of stuff. Yes, and just the preparation ahead of time and the day of, wow, that's crazy. And I'm sure over the years you've seen people bring their families and generations um, who have grown up with Pancake Days. 
That's true. We see the same faces uh, year after year, and, and we'd like to see some new faces, too. You know, this is a real busy weekend. Uh, there's a football game on uh, Saturday night, uh, the Apple Festival in Murfreesboro. But we think there's time for a really good breakfast. So if you come on down to the, the Town Square Pavilion, we'll help you out. Um, it, it should be a good time. And once again, if people are just now tuning in, um, what... Um, how much are tickets for this event? We have adult tickets and kids tickets, so you get a little bit of a price cut with the kids. That's right. <laughs> well, the, the tickets are very reasonably priced. $6 for an adult, uh, $3 for a child. Once again, the hours are Saturday, 7 a.m. until 1 p.m., Sunday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Town Square Pavilion, and that's right in the middle of Carbondale. You can't miss it. Um, one thing that people do like when they come to Pancake Days is we've got a, a uh, it's not an antique, but a, an aging pancake machine mm -hmm. that uh, one of our members, uh, since gone, Ellis Mitchell, purchased years and years ago somewhere near Decatur. And this machine is a mechanical marvel. We've got it set up now so that there's a closed circuit television so that you can watch the lions making the pancakes and see the pancake machine process them, th process them through and so they come out steaming hot and really tasty. And one thing I do want to point out, this is a fundraiser to help um, organizations uh, in the community throughout Carbondale and Southern Illinois, but without the pancake breakfast and without these donations, a lot of these organizations uh, would be in danger of possibly closing um, or just having to reduce their budgets. They, they, they count on the money, and, and what we contribute year to year is fairly, uh, fairly similar. Uh, as I said, we would really like to give all of them more money, but the only way we can do that is if people support our activities. We have Pancake Days twice a year. This is the fall event, and, and we hope that people support it by uh, coming on down, uh, having a really good pancake breakfast, and having a good time, too. And while, while I have you in here, you're always looking for new members to join your club. If someone is interested in learning more about the Lions Club and some of the work you do here in Carbondale, um, who do they need to get a hold of? Where can they go? They can get a hold of any member of the Lions Club. We have more than 70 members. So chances are you know a lion mm -hmm. somewhere in your life. Uh, if you can't find anybody else, you can always contact me. I'm the president. Uh, and you can my, f my contact information you can find on our website and be happy to talk to anyone. Great. Gary, anything else you would like to mention? Maybe I forgot to ask you. No, I think you've covered it pretty well. Uh, I hope that uh, anybody that's uh, listening, uh, if you have any influence about our weather, see if you can keep the rain away this Saturday and Sunday. It's nice that it's sunny today, but uh, as we know, things can change mighty fast down here. So, And the event will still go on get. rain or shine then? The, it does go on rain or shine. If it does rain, you won't get wet. Uh, you, you might want to carry an umbrella until you get to our facility, uh, but uh, you won't get wet, you, your feet won't get muddy, and you'll have a darn good breakfast. Great. Um, once again, Gary with the Lions Club, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it, and best of luck to you this weekend. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And that's all we have today. Thanks so much for listening to Talk of the Town. We'll join you next week. Have a great day.
support for WDBX come from Cristado's Catering Cafe and Bakery, serving breakfast and lunch all day, plus fresh baked cookies, cakes, pastries, and specialty coffee drinks. Open Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at 209 South Illinois in the Kaleidoscope Building. Call 529-4303 or find us on Facebook or at Cristados.com. Support comes from the original Carbondale Farmer's Market, 43 years and still growing. Now open every Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon, rain or shine in the West Town Plaza, just west of Murdale Shopping Center. They'll have local and ecological.